Trading Ideas for the week of May 30th, 2022. Last week, we had one of the best weeks in the past two years. The question is, was this a bear market oversold bounce or this has legs and the beginning of a new bull market? So it is a Memorial Weekend in the United States. So there's a bank holiday on Monday, but that doesn't mean things are not happening internationally. So uh, Monday, when uh, uh, the markets open, we have Spain, Germany, and France. They have the inflation rate. Italy and France, they have the PPI. South Korea will come with their retail sales. Japan will have inflation rate, retail sales, and housing starts. And China, which is very important, they will have their PMI. And as I mentioned, it will, it's a, the markets are closed, and that's uh, the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. But the futures market um, already open Sunday evening. They will close at 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Coast time uh, on Monday. But there's not going to be much volume. On Tuesday, we have Turkey, Italy, India, Canada, and Australia that will come up with their GDP numbers. Germany will have their unemployment rate. Eurozone and Italy will have their inflation rate. South Africa, Mexico, Brazil will have their unemployment rate. And United States and Great Britain will have the house, housing price index. And then Germany will also have the retail sales. Now, on Tuesday, we have um, uh, one interesting uh, earnings before the open. This is a small um, company, it's a tanker. It's a North American tanker. So I, we like to see how is the activity and what is their forecast. So that's on Tuesday before open. And then after the close, we have the Hewlett Packard and the Salesforce, the CRM, and then Hewlett Packard. Um, HPQ will come with their numbers. On Wednesday, Spain and Indonesia will come up with their tourist arrivals. And as you know, you know those countries, um, tourism plays a big role as far as their GDP concern. Also, Italy, Spain, Germany, Eurozone, Great Britain, Brazil, Canada, US, Mexico, South Korea, will have their purchasing manager index. And you have to remember there is a manufacturing and non-manufacturing, and then they have the total or composite. So this is gonna be most of them are, some of them are both, but most of them are manufacturing. Italy and Eurozone will have their unemployment rate. Euro, pay attention that their president, the European Central Bank president Lagarde will have a speech as well as many other uh, uh, central banks presidents this week, as always, we wanna pay attention. They have speeches from Bank of Australia to Canada, and then many of the, uh, the Fed presidents in, in the United States. As far as uh, uh, Russia, they have their unemployment rate, uh, retail sales and GDP, and Indonesia will have their inflation rate. So the earnings we have, these are going to be interesting earnings. Um, after the close, we have the GameStop and Chewy. So pay attention to that. Thursday, we have Spain's unemployment rate. Brazil will have their inflation rate, GDP and PPI. Eurozone will have their PPI. Mexico will have consumer confidence. Australia, India, Russia will have their PMI numbers. South Korea will have their inflation rate. And then Saudi Arabia has OPEC and non-OPEC ministerial meetings. So they've been having this more frequently. And I, I believe probably it's not a meeting. They're just having parties to celebrate uh, all the money that they're raking in. So anyway, that's the meeting on Thursday. Um, also, the crude oil inventories will be on Thursday at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific Coast time rather than 7.30 a.m. on Wednesday due to a shorter week because of the Monday being bank holiday. As always, we like to pay attention to our gold trade. And then the earnings, we have Lululemon and uh, Restoration Hardware, and hardware they're going to be after the close. Uh, Friday, we have the Turkey coming up with the inflation rate, uh, which is probably the highest 
inflation rate globally. So we want to pay attention to that and their PPI numbers. Now, South Africa, Spain, Italy, Germany, Eurozone, Brazil, and US will have their PMI. And this one will be on the non-manufacturing or the service numbers. Russia will have their business confidence. And Great Britain, they have the Platinum Jubilee Bank holiday. So this is the 70th year of crowning of uh, Queen Elizabeth. So this is going to be, the markets will be closed. Now, United States, this is very important. You want to pay attention if you want to have their um, non-farm payroll trade. This is what you want to pay attention is the unemployment rate, non-farm payrolls, average hourly earnings. I did not uh, put it in the um, presentation, but at 5.30 again, please pay attention to the NFP trade. And then as always at 10 o'clock, we have the Baker Hughes old rate count. So those are what's going on. I hope they're helpful. So let's dive into stock of the week. And the, the common theme, it has been we looking for stocks that they've had actually momentum and globally they are very viable. So the company we are looking at is a Chilean company, SQM, and uh, they are in, in mining and mineral. And basically they are, uh, it's in the chemical industry. Now they are in Santiago and uh, they have about well, 6,294 full-time employees. So what do they do? They're a producer of potassium nitrate and iodine. Can we say they are really in a fertilizing business and you know how hot that is. It again, with the conflict in Russia and Ukraine, it has been um, a, a big factor in the demand. And of course, with the, uh, what we are having with the crops and the, the and planting and the food crisis. So the firm produces specialty plant nutrients, iodine derivatives, lithium. So that's another highlight. So you want to look at that. It's one of the largest ones. And it's derivatives, potassium chloride, potassium sulfate, and certain industrial chemicals. So we want to uh, pay attention to this company. Obviously, it has done very well. The question is, will they continue because they've come a long way. So um, the, the Zach's ranking them one, which is a strong buy. And when we look at um, all the companies in the chemicals in the United States, there are 22 of them. I rank them based on their market cap. So SQM is number four listed in the uh, uh, United States. And you see the, uh, uh, they've had a really strong last quarters of um, earnings and it has pushed them. So their price earning to growth is under 0.61. Uh, when we look at the forward PE is at 13.27. So uh, there's a lot of growth. You see this year alone, they have had a um, growth of 227.9%. And next five years, they're gonna be growing at 40.6%. So um, on Friday alone, they were up 5.78%. As far as looking at the chart, you see it has come a long way already for the year. Year to date, while the markets are down, S&P is down about 13%, uh, SQM is up 120, almost 125%. So are they running out of steam? Do you think they will go more? So the thoughts are we're looking at, there are some resistance as we dive in more, uh, but I don't think we are done yet. So pay attention to the stock that is, um, it still has some legs to go. So they had their earnings on May 18th and they are, that's one thing we wanna pay attention, they're almost 80% above their 200 day moving average. So they kind of stretched at this time, uh, but the question is they're fundamentally a sound company. And again, looks like there's still demand for their products and they are 32% above their 20 day moving average they do they are shortable and they're op optionable so they're not much shorting but you can see there's about 43 percent institutional ownership and 72 percent insider ownership so when you look at the investor business daily they are ranked the composite ranking or rating is 99 and they're the number five of all the um, companies in the specialty fertilizers iodine industrial chemicals 
And as you can see, they are, um, their industries rank number nine and their group is A plus. And when we look at the fundamental side, um, earning per share is, uh, you know, it says yellow. So again, Bill O'Neill likes to have 85. So they're pretty close to that. But look at the last quarter earnings growth and last three quarters. And uh, basically um, the estimate revisions have been upward. Um, the problem they run is the tier uh, earning per share growth rate. So, uh, but it, it looks like, you know, the, this uh, recent year has really uh, put them in a, you can see for the current years up 298%. So basically this has been an amazing year for them. As far as their fundamental goes, so you can see the sales margin and return on equity, they're A, uh, rated A. Again, we go back that three years. So obviously they didn't have this, much growth of what's happening globally. So they're having a great year now. And uh, basically that's the reason the um, sales growth is only 15%. As we know, um, again, when we talk about CanSlim, you'd like to have about 25% or more. Um, as far as looking at the charts, I want to look at, go back to 2002, see where we stand as far as that goes. And you see, once we broke above our, really all time uh, resistance $58 that uh, we had a, a false breakout for that month. Uh, we retraced and then 2022 was a uh, magnificent. And again, with the uh, European conflict, it really, uh, it absolutely um, was a, a great factor in this movement. So you can see the relative strength compared to this uh, S&P 500. When we look at from the Hakinashi point of view, I'm looking at on a daily basis, you see how the MACD just uh, um, basically just broke out and uh, it has been a magnificent move right before the earnings. So after that, I mean, look at this move. So we still on a top, um, I mean, upward movement and um, because of again, going back to IBD from the technical point of view, let's pay attention. RS rating is at 99. It's only 5% from its 52 weeks high. But this is what concerns me. It's at 35% above its 50 day moving average. So, you know, the markets need uh, the prices, the companies, they need a little rest in this. So uh, we shall see. Their accumulation distribution is B, plus, and their upturn volume is one and a half. So these are all positive. And you can see the changes in funds owning the stock is 20%. So when we look at from the point of view of linear regression channel, when we look at from the squeeze, when we look at the A and C wave, so they're all positive, but we are a little bit overheated. Of course, you can see the LRC is upward moving, the trend is up. So there's a lot of strength. And again, after that uh, um, earning Call. I mean, this is amazing move, but I believe we need a little rest and we will continue. This is from the, again, Hakanashi and MACD, as you can see, the relative strength, that's the RSI, RSI index. Uh, although it looks like an overbought zone, this could still doesn't mean that it is overbought. So basically, uh, we want to uh, pay attention to that that it has, still has strength, but we need a little of uh, a little bit more as far as uh, a little digestion. As far as the last thing I want to look at, this does not, as you can see, does is not very, very liquid from um, um, uh, volume point of view as far as options go. And uh, you can see this, the sizzle index was 1.244. So we had 2,500 on the call side on Friday, May 27. We had 816 on the put side. And, but one thing you pay attention, if you pay attention, you see that uh, the calls on the ask side, they were two and a half times the bid side. And on the put side, the bids were higher than ask size. So one thing I noticed is at June 17th, again, you see not a lot of volume. We have a large, um, open interest compared to, uh, you know, any other open interest that's available. And that's a hundred. And 
this trade came in, it was a large volume and it was a more of a swap. So there was like a multi um, um, uh, purchases. So it was not done by one uh, uh, institution or one fund or one person. It looked like it was a different, uh, different purchases. So anyway, I mean, this is something you can take a look at. You can maybe do a little spread or look at it from a long-term point of view, swing trading. And uh, basically, again, this is another chemical company, but they are, you know, they, they have the momentum and strength. So with that in mind, I wish you a wonderful, actually, first of all, a wonderful Memorial weekend if you're in the United States and have a, a prosperous week ahead, a healthy one till we meet again next Sunday. Thank you so much and have a wonderful uh, evening ahead or day, week ahead.